I'm very excited to introduce this month's drawing challenge, Urban Sketching. And I'll go ahead and share my screen so you can see our calendar for this month. Ooh, la, la. I know. That's a calendar? Wow. Technically, it's a calendar. Yeah. Ooh, so we're doing yeah. things a little differently this, this month. Um, we are going to just look at this one calendar. It's a printable PDF, which is in the membership group so that you can print this out and check it off as you go through. So as you'll see, there are four rows. Each row is a week, five days a week as usual. Our drawing challenge asks you to draw for five days a week, 30 minutes a day. And what is a little bit different here is it's incredibly open-ended compared to the drawing challenges that we've done in the past. And so today, what's so important about the um, lesson that we'll talk about tonight is what is urban sketching in the first place? How to get started when you're, when you're doing an urban sketch? What counts as an urban sketch and what isn't an urban sketch? And once you have that down, then oh, honestly, so, <laughs> so exciting. Love it, I just love it. Yay. <laughs> so once we get started, then you can really interpret any of these prompts however you want. And the challenge for you is going to be to find some way to interpret them and turn them into, you know, your drawing. So let me start with what is urban sketching? So urban sketching is really a movement as well as an artistic style. So it is a global community of sketchers that started, I think, want to say in Washington in the States and urban sketching is all about drawing what you see almost like what they call reportage style where you're reporting on the world around you and exactly what you're seeing. So on this calendar on the right side you'll see the manifesto of the urban sketchers. So I'm going to go over that and if you have any questions along the way just wave. Um, or Rita, you can type a comment in the, in the comment box there. So number one, urban sketchers draw on location. This can be indoors or out, and you draw what you see from direct observation. So it's not drawing from photographs. It's actually drawing from where you are. Now, I will say it with a caveat that I've known some great urban sketchers who will do their drawing on location and then go home and add the color from home looking at a, a photo reference. So that's definitely an option. Next, urban sketching drawings tell the story of our surroundings, the places we live and where we travel. So it's not only something for when you're on vacation, but it's incredibly popular. Of course, our hometowns tend to not be as exciting to us as they are to other people, but um, oh my gosh, look at the cities we're in. Uh, Judah's in New York City, uh, got Diane in Guatemala, me and Rita here are in San Miguel de Allende. So you'd be surprised at, once you start urban sketching, the very simple everyday scenes that are, just become so much more magical um, when you capture them in your sketchbook. So another thing, I wanted to point out there in the storytelling aspect, urban sketching is very much about storytelling, is it's very popular and I just love it when people add a little note, they add the date, they add the location, um, or they might add other notes about what was going on whenever they did their urban sketch. So Judith, when she was on her recent trip to China, was doing amazing urban sketching and it was so fun when she was posting all of her details of where she was. But mine, mine was from photographs. Mm, okay. So but it slight was difference. sketching nonetheless. It was right. not rotated and detailed and... Yeah, urban. but I, I'm just saying it wasn't out there in front On of the... Location yeah. per se, right. yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure sure how strict the urban sketching police are. <laughs> I know <laughs> some people get started and then they do the rest of the drawing in other places. So I think as long as you do your best to draw what you can on location, then you get the points. Um, 
So urban sketches are a record of a time and place. So they're not a drawing that you're doing of, for example, if Judith found a picture of New York City in the 1950s, that's not an urban sketch. Right. Uh, it's of the time and place where you are now. So it's where you get that reportage idea of you're reporting on the moment that you're in. Oh. Urban sketches are truthful to the scenes that you witness. So I'm just thinking of Diane's sketch of Godzilla attacking the, the scene the other day. <laughs> so that is a charming, wonderful, magical style. But technically, that would not count as an urban sketch unless Godzilla was actually attacking the town. <laughs> so it's, it doesn't allow for the fantasy. It's very much like, what's really going on? Next, okay. urban sketchers use any kind of media and cherish their individual styles. So there's no one way to do an urban sketch. I've seen urban sketches that are really rough and gritty and dark and black and white. I've seen very colorful, bright um, architectural style urban sketches. Whatever your style is, that's how you urban sketch. So um, don't think that there's a specific urban sketch style that you have to do, which is again, one of the reasons why this is a bit looser of a prompt this month. So we'll see what comes out. Yes, Judith. So the difference uh, between what I've been doing and what urban sketching is, mm -hmm. is that mine is very planned and plotted out and it's not a quick drawing out there in the world. Mm. The quick drawing out there in the world is what I want to learn because I don't do that. Great. Well, this will be a, a wonderful challenge. And even though it might be quick when you're getting the initial drawing in, I, I know for sure, I think I'm going to end up doing a lot of these drawings just in black and white and then coming home and adding color, maybe taking a picture just to say, okay, you know, I can only spend an hour in this location and then I need to go, but I can come back and at least add the color later on. So that's something that I learned in a workshop from James Richards, who is, he literally wrote a book on urban sketching and he came through San Miguel and taught a workshop in my studio, it was such an honor to have him grace the, the doors <laughs> or the walls of my studio at the time. So that was um, very enlightening and really cool to see how he did his work. Cause that just felt like it gave me so much permission to say, great, it doesn't have to be this quick, perfectly done urban sketch. You know, his are so detailed and so gorgeous. And I was intimidated by that idea, Judith too, that I have to do this entire thing all in one sitting. Oh my God. like. How do you find the time? So at least also, the color. Also, I'm not as, like, the next line is we're truthful to the scene we mm -hmm. witness. How truthful? Great question, because I know for sure whenever urban sketchers draw busy, crowded scenes, that a lot of the time they make up the people walking by. So mm -hmm. they'll be a, a kind of inventive with, um, we've talked in the past about quick, ways to draw crowds and scenes so that they look like a lot of people are there. So the urban sketchers are not saying like, I need every outfit to match all the people that I see, but they are going to be truthful in the sense that they're drawing a crowd because they, there are people there. Um, so I think as long as you're true to, you know, what, is happening in the scene and not being, not adding a fantastical, like magical realist, realistic element. Um, no Godzillas. <laughs> yeah, no, no Godzillas. No snow, you know, when there's no snow, don't Sticking add snow. Sticking to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't make it go. spring when it's right. not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because you wish it were, no. Right. So. Almost like, because if I, we're thinking of, I have the, um, the motto of the urban sketchers in the corner there, show the world one sketch at a time. That is the mm. urban sketching motto. And so when I think of it, I think it's this amazing concept of we're all like, each of our sketches are this little window out into the world and we're trying to share 
with all the other urban sketching community out there, what we see through our little little um, window that you can see through your sketchbook. So if somebody wanted to know, yeah, what's happening in the city that you're at and the house that you're at, um, that they would be able to look at it and know that you're not like totally lying to them. So, you know, there's a little iffiness, of course, in art. One thing that I do is I edit a lot. So I tend to cut out a lot of little details if I don't think they're necessary for the composition or if they would be distracting from the scene. Yeah, but, I need to learn that. Yeah, it's that's I do all the details and then I go crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and it's kind of an experiment always, but uh you you kinda get the hang of it. If you start with a few details at the focal point where you're the most interested, then everything else um, around it can be a little more simple. That's usually the rule that I follow. So if I'm drawing the parochia, you know, the big church in San Miguel, I might add more details on that church, but everything around it, I keep pretty simple because first of all, time is an issue. <laughs> and second of all, I want the attention to go to the, the place where the details are. So... So let's continue on here. Um, urban sketchers support each other and draw together. So here we are. We're already very much doing the urban sketching thing by getting together weekly and supporting each other through the ups and downs of making art. And I would recommend, this reminds me, of just going on, if you happen to be on Facebook, um, and searching your city and urban sketching because I'm sure that at least, you know, Judith, there's got to be at least one, if not several urban sketching groups in New York. We've got a very active urban sketching group here in San Miguel. Um, and you can also get on their email list and they will email you if you are not uh, on Facebook. So Rita or anyone watching the replay here, if you want to get that email um, contact info, just message me or email me and I'll be sure to hook you up with Judy, the lovely lady who runs that list. And so I get, I get there oh, on Facebook, I get the posts that people do, which are great, mm -hmm. but I don't get the email saying we're meeting up today in San on the San Miguel. Yeah. You know, I think what I realized recently is they now have a urban sketching San Miguel page and then a separate urban sketching San Miguel group. And I am not sure, I think it's on the page that they post the, um, the locations, but I will be sure and post that in our, uh, our Mighty Network, Judith, and I will tag you in it so you'll be sure to see it. So whichever okay. one is the one. I definitely get the, you know, when Megan or, or you or anybody posts what you've done, I get those and I love them. Yeah, there's some incredibly talented urban sketchers in town. Um, yeah, I think that's the group, but I will, I will post that for sure. And last but not least, urban sketchers share their drawings online. We show the world one drawing at a time. And that's the beauty of urban sketching is, yeah, like Ju was saying, you get to follow the posts or follow people on their blogs or be in a group like ours where we share our artwork together and that just makes the world a more beautiful rich wonderful magical place so yay art <laughs> so that is urban sketching bust a brush bust a brush bust a brush so rita we have our own little saying in the group now uh based on in uh theater where you say break a leg we say bust a brush so if you hear people saying, bust a brush, <laughs> you know what it means. You know, we're not just weird. But we we're are also weird. just weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the good kind of weird. All righty. So, so exciting. Are you in San Miguel for like days and days and days? You're there for like ever now? No. You're there till February? I no. wish. <laughs> oh, as soon as I get here, I just wonder like, why am I leaving again? But I also love the other city that I, I stay in, so. I get the best of both worlds. Um, I'm only here for two weeks teaching two workshops and then I go to my brother's wedding and then I'll be back in Texas until 
January. I'm here for a week, bouncing back and forth, but I will definitely see y'all in February. Can't wait for that. Are you in Austin? Are you in Austin? Where are no, you in I'm in Galveston. We're a funky little island south of Houston. Where is the wedding? It is in New Orleans. So that's going to be a good place to do Oh my God, I can't Ooh. tell you how many people I know going to New Orleans in the next two months. That's amazing. Oh, that's so funny. Everybody. Yeah. No, I, thought, I know three people in New Orleans right this moment. Tis the season, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. they've been planning this wedding for years, so <laughs> and they didn't exactly <laughs> uh, just come up with it, but great. Well, right. I'm sure I'll be get, showing some drawings from there soon. So I wanted to talk through these prompts because these are a little different than the prompts we've done in the past. And then what we'll do is we will draw together a little urban sketch of wherever we are right now using just the absolute basics of how I tend to start an urban sketch. And I wanted to let y'all know a little bit of what to expect for the next few weeks. This is a four week challenge. Next Tuesday, we'll talk about how to draw people in your scenes. That's something that we've discussed in the past in some of our previous challenges, but it's something that just, it, it never gets old. <laughs> it's a, such a challenge, especially with urban sketching when you are actually out there sitting, watching people walk by and wondering how the heck you're supposed to draw them while they're moving away from you. So we will have a special lesson about that. Um, this, this week is all about just how to set up, how to frame your urban sketching drawing. The week after that, I was thinking I'll check out and see if there's anything in particular that you would like guidance on. So whoever's on these calls or in the group, whatever you request, y'all have my number one priority. Uh, but if there's no specific something you need help with, then we'll work a little bit more on perspective and creating depth in your urban sketches. And finally, that last week, um, composing the page and adding different elements, writing, you know, notes. And throughout all of these, I am going to be um, bringing my colors along. So from this whole time, day one, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you would add color to your scene. And um, we'll have colorful urban sketches for the whole month. So it should be a really fun drawing challenge this, this November. So to check out the drawing prompts that we have here, first, the first week we have home, hot drink, materials, partner, and meal. <laughs> so I was trying to come up with some things that would be really accessible to everyone. One thing I want to note is that you do not have to do these in order. So you can read through the whole month. And the idea is just these are inspirational ideas for you to um, help you just get something to draw. Because honestly, if you have nothing and a blank page staring at you, it's almost impossible sometimes to figure out what to draw. So, what does materials mean and what does partner mean? Great. So a lot of these are going to be very open-ended. Um, and you are welcome to interpret it the way that you want. So when I wrote materials, I was thinking drawing materials, perhaps your um, watercolor set, if you have a watercolor set or anything. But if you happen to be somewhere where um, maybe you see the materials that someone else is using in their job, you're stuck at a car dealership or something and you see all these car materials, then who knows, you could use those. Um, and partner, I thought, you know, of course you could come up with something interesting for that. So if you don't have a human partner, maybe it's your pet or maybe it's a salt and pepper shaker that are partners together, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you can get creative with that. Um, okay. now one thing that I do want to mention is for an urban sketch to be an urban sketch the drawing that you do has to have a context around it. So when I just said, you know, salt and pepper shaker, you don't 
just want to only draw the salt and pepper shaker as if you were doing a still life with nothing around it. Now, if you were to write a note, <laughs> like here I am in my kitchen, you know, um, just deciding <laughs> which one of these guys to use, I don't know. But if you made some sort of note where it became more of a reportage, or I've seen urban sketches where um, they'll have a big title, you can definitely use uh, creative um, fonts or typography in your urban sketches to give it a little bit more of like this, this sense that you're reporting on what is happening in your world at that moment, then, then you can get away with it. So for example, materials, that becomes an urban sketch if you write my art materials at the top and then label them. Whereas if you just only drew your water uh, color kit with no notes, no date, anything, then it's not exactly an urban sketch. It's kind of a just still life. So I think that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Ooh, part of part of the piece layout. Part of yes, absolutely. Layout is the key, and oh, how you compose your page. It's not just part of the play. It is layout. <laughs> yes. So. Okay plant you know that could be anything it could be a tree it could be a bouquet of flowers full this is where we're getting really open-ended so full could be a self-portrait after a big meal <laughs> it could be a car full of people i mean anything you could think of um where you get a sense of fullness it could even be uh just the mood of a, of a scene. If you happen to be in a busy cafe and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so full here, you know? Um, uh, and maybe what would be really fun for us to share with each other is to write a note about how you're interpreting the prompt of the day. Um, so purchase, you know, that could be absolutely anything you bought. Could be uh, a recent purchase. You could be a, a store, street, moon. Stop me if you have questions on these um clothes one theme that i've seen in a, a lot of urban sketchers um sketches is they lay out the clothes that they're about to bring on a trip or maybe they say these are my five favorite dresses um so you do something like that <laughs> oh god my clothes are so complex <laughs> yeah i bet coming from guatemala that would be quite a challenge with the amazing textiles they have there. Framed. I'm really excited about doing framed. I was thinking I'm going to make a fancy frame to frame my composition, but you could also draw a picture of a drawing or a painting that's around where you are. Vehicle. Could be a bike. Could be a bus. It could be a car. It could be your feet. <laughs> so um, open-ended. Comfy. Another very open one. Feet. Doesn't, they don't have to be yours. Um, seat, <laughs> chill, pile, thankful. That more or less is, is going to fall on our U.S. holiday over here. Um, but anything you're thankful for, I thought would be kind of sweet. And of course, swell, which can be interpreted in many ways. It could be. Jessica, notice that only two of these start with a capital letter. I just realized that too. I meant to have only Ooh. thankful be a capital, but I messed up and also did pile. So that, that is just. She's really asked crazy. me for that kind of feedback. <laughs> and it comes so natural. It's oh, crazy. it does. It does. I, I might go back and change it, but I might not. You never know. It's um, the editor in me. Sorry. It's all good. Um, as long as you turn off that left side of your brain when you're drawing, then <laughs> that's the important part. Okay, great. Well, that is going to be our drawing challenge for the month. So I'm going to go ahead and... Wow. Oh, so oops. it's going to be fun to figure out all the different layouts. Yes, it yeah, definitely... To figure out what your actual sketching, urban sketching persona layout is. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Oh, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. 
Um, as always, I've created a Pinterest board. If you like to follow the Pinterest boards, I'll post that on the, um, on the website. And I'm going to go ahead and date this one so it'll officially be an urban sketch, but I was going to come back and color it later. What is today, the 6th? Um, so here's an example of a phase one, two-ish urban sketch of the place that I'm staying in. I drew this earlier today. So um, I'm actually going to create a little video that I'll post or maybe show y'all next week. We, we shall see. Um, but what I started with with this urban sketch, just to take you through the steps of how I begin an urban sketch, is I like to have some kind of frame and I don't care if I keep my drawing in the frame. So as you can see, I broke the frame by having this column just exploding out of it. Um, but to me, that's a really convenient way to, to get started. And whenever I'm trying to decide, like looking around wherever my setting is, like what's going to fit on the page? What is going to fit in this little frame that I've created? I can, wherever I am, set up a little viewfinder with my fingers and create um, at least a focal point because if not it's extremely confusing to know where something fits um, in the whole field of vision that you have onto your page. You what did you think. start with? Uh, as far as? In that drawing. In that drawing. The first thing I drew was the line of the table here, what was closest in the foreground. So I started with my foreground. I drew the cat sitting on the table in front of me, which was cute. I wasn't expecting to get a cat. Uh, I thought it was just going to be the uh, the background scene with no life in it. So that was a, a really fun little urban sketching moment was to have the cat join me. Um, so she got to be front and center. And then I did the column next and I just fell in love with the top of the column. So that's got a lot of detail. Then I drew this little, it's kind of a pool building top going back and I'm not too worried about perspective but it's like generally going back to some kind of vanishing point way back here I guess um, but I was more drawing what I saw and checking the angles with my pencil trick um, to check the angles and what I thought was really interesting about this scene before the cat came in was this little sculpture over here so I put him in and a just suggestion of the foliage there's like a cactus tree right here and these two pots. And so my plan is to start, so I've started with the blue pen. And when I go back and go over that with a black pen, then I can fix anything that I messed up and the black is dark enough that you won't really notice or pay attention to the mistake. So when I'm thinking of my mistakes, like I see that this could be more symmetrical. Um, I might add some more suggestions really? of foliage. Well, that really bothers you? I mean, if I I'm thought with the sketching, it's supposed to be loose and not not architectural photographic. Yeah, I mean, it still won't be. Um, it'll be very, very subtle. So, I mean, I'll just put like a millimeter over to the side, a little bit of a, a different line. So I'm not going to redraw the whole thing or anything. But, okay. and I'll also add a little bit of hatching and shading. I might give a suggestion of the texture of this table. It's like a stone table. So when I come back with the black pen, you know, honestly, there, there's no major mistakes that I need to fix. But if there were, that's my that's my time. But at the same time, um, this will count as an urban sketch, even if I go back and add those elements later, because I did the pretty much the full scene while I was there. And you do it directly in pen, no pencil first. Oh, yes. And that reminds me, actually, I went on the Is that urban. A rule? It's not a rule. However, oh, wow. um, I went on the urban sketching San Miguel Facebook page and I said, hey, everybody, I'm about to start this urban sketching group uh, thing. What advice would you have for people who are just starting urban sketching? And the first suggestion that many people seconded was that the most important thing for them was to draw in pen and to start with pen and just stick with pen because it helps you keep um, the speed up. You don't try to stop and erase and it trains you not to make mistakes 
it helps you get into a certain style. So, so that was a big deal for that. And uh, huh. Diane, I think we might have lost you. I hope you, no, I don't I'm know here, if it's just I'm the here. video. Okay, great. I'm here, it's just the, uh, I, did you see me? No, oh, but yeah. as long as you can hear I'm us. Here. Now we can oh, hear you. Yeah, okay, great. Battery low. Oh, battery low. Um, the next suggestion was to start with big shapes first, which I think is essential for all drawing, period. And so that's definitely what I try and do, um, is I look for what are the biggest elements in the composition that I'm looking at. And then after you've got your composition laid out, then you come back and do the small details. So that was another suggestion. Um, and trying to think, I think that was it. But I will um, let you know if, I, if there's anything I'm forgetting. So after I will have finished the black pen after the blue pen, and some people like to use, um, I have a friend who's an incredible illustrator. She starts with a hot pink pencil and then she goes back with the black and then she'll add color. And so that would be my final step with this, which I'll post whenever I get around to doing that, would be adding the watercolor layer and having it a finished full, beautiful urban sketch. And I just snapped a picture while I was there so that I can go back and match the colors. And those are the steps that um, I'm gonna go through with y'all tonight. Do you tend to use the uh, watercolor pencils or watercolor paint? Um, it depends. I have both of them with me right now. And I, if I have the time and the um, ability, then I would use the watercolor set. But I find that the watercolor pencils are a little bit easier to carry around. Like I can carry around just this and my water brush and I'm good to go as opposed to, I don't know, just, I feel like, and I was bummed out cause I could, this is the only size that El Pato was selling when I was here in Mexico, but this is the watercolor travel kit that I wow. have and it's too big. I don't, <laughs> I don't like it. It's, um, I mean, it'll make do and I'm not going to be a big baby about it, but ideally I would have one half my, the size. Mine is a half the size great yeah. yeah and the koi watercolor kit is great um but i would rather have the essential colors and mix all of the other colors i need rather than have so many colors that sometimes it slows me down just being like oh which which of these five shades of yellow should i use so uh you know um it's definitely not the end of the world and I'm sure once I get used to using this set a little bit more I'll be grateful for the six shades of green <laughs> um, but if I was going to recommend to a student I would say you don't need this many this is a little bit overkill um, it's better to have just a few colors and get really good at mixing because as long as you have your primaries it's nice to have a cool yellow and a warm yellow um, a cool red and a bright like fire engine red uh, and then a cyan and then more of like an ultramarine blue and with that you can take over the world so draw the world <laughs> one i wanted to ask time. about first paper size I, obviously you're using a multimedia paper so the best size is you know i mean of course i would prefer the smallest note possible hey <laughs> Yeah, well, let's remember that the Urban Sketchers say they celebrate every artist's style and what they want to do. So um, this is actually really thin paper that was probably made to be a journal and not a drawing sketchbook, but I just started drawing in it. And so now it's a sketchbook. So when I watercolor in this, it's going to bleed through everywhere. Like Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I looked at the paper, like your ink was ready. Yeah, this is not a drawing. This is just the bleed through from back when we did our elements of art. So I just only draw on one side with this. Right. And when I watercolor, it'll just show through. And yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, at the time, I needed a sketchbook and this was what I had. So this is what I used. Uh, but ideally, yes, you could get a mixed media sketchbook. 
Um, watercolor paper is excellent if you know you're going to be watercoloring in it. It's a big investment or it can be for um, if you aren't going to actually watercolor on every page, but with Urban Sketching, it's just so lovely to watercolor when you're um, out and about to add that color. And yeah, so if you know you're going to have all Urban Sketching for a while, it might be worthwhile to get a little Urban Sketching sketchbook. And to go to the question of size, Diane, I think the most important thing is what is a size that can fit in your purse or your backpack that you know you're going to carry around with you all the time? Because for me, I never know when I'm going to get stuck in a waiting line and, or, you know, in some situation. And my worst fear is to be stuck somewhere and not have a sketchbook with me because that would be such a wasted opportunity. So I tend to go for portability more than there's one size. Um, and I would say, you know, if you somewhere between like, five to seven inches would be on the small side. I think that's about what this is more or less, about postcard mm -hmm. size. Um, but maybe something a little bigger would be nice. And I wouldn't go over piece of paper size, you know, eight by 11 or eight by 10. You don't need any anything bigger than that. Um, although I have seen some urban sketchers with giant sketchbooks, but what they'll do is they will have like three urban sketches uh, on a page with those big sketchbooks, but just what, what you want to carry around is really the real question. Okay, okay. Well, let's go ahead and start drawing. Um, so here is your challenge. You're going to draw something that you can see from wherever you are. And I am in a bedroom. I think I'm going to scooch myself over a little bit, or maybe I should draw what I see with the laptop in front of me. That might be a cool page. Yeah, I think How I'll do that. We get? Well, we have about 15 minutes. Okay. So it's, we might consider this phase one where we get the drawing in, and then <clears throat> later we can go back and um, if you want to add color, you don't have to add color. You could do it all black and white scene. I really like to go in and add um, hatch marks lately. That's been a style that I enjoy, just that uh, vertical or horizontal or diagonal lines that are close together. So we did a lot of hatching back when we did our elements of... So is it art. kind of like contour drawing more than... Um, the hatching. I don't know, I know. Is it kind of like doing contour drawing more than doing um, architectural drawing. Now, is it more? It's almost like a marriage of the two. So for, if anyone's watching from the replay, um, or Rita, a contour drawing is when you're looking at the outline of things and kind of just drawing the big shapes, maybe, would you say, um, uh, is what you're thinking, Judith? Yeah. And then, Architectural drawing is much more like structured and kind of like rigid. And lot, the lines are very even and, and tight as opposed to contour, mm -hmm. which is more loose. Okay, so actually the answer to that question, I would say, is with urban sketching, there's no rule with that. It is your style. So I a lot of architects have gotten into urban sketching and they have an extremely architectural style that they bring to it, um, which is cool. Um, and I've seen some very scribbly loose drawings of other artists who aren't, have, were never architects. So yeah, maybe you could experiment throughout the days, maybe do one in one style and then do another in the other and see what happens. So step one, if you haven't already, is to figure out what you're gonna draw and you can decide how you want the frame to fit on your page. I think I'm gonna do kind of a tall, do I wanna do all the way over there? Or do I wanna do tall and skinny? I think I'm gonna do a tall and skinny frame rectangle for my page. And I'm 
I definitely do not use a ruler or a straight edge. That's something, again, that is a stylistic choice. Whenever I create a frame on the page, so this is what I'm going to be working with tonight, um, one thing that um, I've learned throughout my time in art is that it will look kind of better. It's more pleasing to the eye if you have uh, a space at the bottom of the page for your frame or for your painting or drawing to sit on. And it's sort of a visual weight thing. So this kind of gives the drawing something to be seated on almost. It's um, also an opportunity for you to, to write out, you know, if you have a note you want to write under there, then you can do that. So inside my frame, I'm going to look for the big shapes. And so I think it's pretty interesting. I'm going to put the computer. You can see that when I do this, I close one eye because you can um, see more two dimensionally when you close one eye. And I'm just looking at what fits inside of this frame that I've developed and how big the biggest item in my picture is going to fit, which for me is the laptop. So it's going to be very meta kind of drawing. I like that we're back in contour land. <laughs> it's great. Back to contours. What, um, as opposed to, what were we doing last month? We've been doing, I don't know what we've been doing, but remembering <laughs> contours is just so nice. It's just a great moment in, in art. It is. Yes. We did some contour drawing in our um, class today. Wish we could hear from Rita, uh, but Rita, you'll have to tell me your thoughts tomorrow on contour, but um, I was telling them about our Nicolaides class and they were all horrified that you could spend <laughs> a whole hour, you know, we did the really quick 30 second style contour drawings. All right. And um, uh, we, we love those. The short yeah, ones? It took us so long to get longer than like five seconds. It was like, <laughs> oh. That was such an adventure. Oh, the, the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> we were such babies. Now we're such pros. Right. Oh, I think I just made a mistake. I decided yeah. to draw out the, the keys on the keyboard. What was I thinking? Oh, <gasps> my God. Just give an impression of them. Yeah, thank you. That's <laughs> an impression of a heel. Yeah, I'm breaking my rule. So it instantly went from being like fun and making sense to being like, wah, 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 wah. and I'll show you where I'm at right now. Um, I started doing my big shape, which is the laptop, but I started drawing like, oh, well, let me just put this detail and those details. And that's not what you do. So you first do the big shape. So I'm going to stop that and draw in the other big shape um, things on the sketchbook. I am already breaking my frame, which I really like. I think there's something kind of just, it just makes me happy to have a box and then to go outside of the lines. That's how I live my life. <laughs> and I'll do just a quick suggestion of some of these little. Kind of the. pile of junk on my desk. Still have to keep reminding myself not to get too detailed. Go 
how many minutes do we have? About eight more minutes. Oh, we have tons of time. Tons of time. Um, It's something that's interesting. I've noticed, you know, I used to think like, oh, there's this, there's the perfect subject to draw. Like, oh, what should I draw next? It's got to be something epic and important. And blah, 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 blah. But once you start just drawing everyday objects around you, you start to realize like, wow, that lamp is fascinating. One of my <laughs> favorite things. things was doing my um, paint dispenser when we first started doing contour drawings and I still love that one. The tape dispenser, yes. That was the negative it space? Is. What? Was that negative space? The, the no, contour drawing. Oh, it was contour drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to go back and do color, do we? No, absolutely not. I probably won't go back and do color on this one. I think it'll be more interesting just as a black and white. Or right now I'm doing blue, so it'll be kind of blue and black maybe. It's so funny. I've got <laughs> a little bit of a self-portrait built in here. Me too. I'm doing my self-portrait right this minute. Yay! Doing it from the screen on your on your PC. Yeah. You too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, great minds think alike. Oh my God. Just to show you where I'm at so I, far. I was trying to think that I I wanted to hatch the computer, but no, that's too much to do. Like, do you the cross hatching or something? Like where it's black, my oh. screen mostly black, and I thought, no, that would be really awful. Mm -hmm. But I have to do that just for the sake of context, I guess. Oh, that is, is so. That is so funny. <laughs> Oof. So I'm getting desperate for something that would work. I've got so much junk here. I blew already out of the darn frame so many times. It's oh, this is so out of proportion. <laughs> yeah. But you know, good. when somebody looks at it later, they're never going to know. Uh, so as long as we can like make it work. Like my face here is like enormous on the screen, which on the screen, it's actually pretty small, but oh well, no one has to know. Mm. Judith, are you doing any self-portraits over there? No. No, huh? Okay. No. 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 So, Rita, you will have to show me tomorrow what you drew. I'm excited to see that. Is Rita still here? She's yeah, quiet. she's um, <laughs> no sound, unfortunately. And I see someone just entered, so hello. Whoever you are, we are in our drawing section, ending our um, our introduction to urban sketching. So if you wanna come back later, I'll be posting the replay in our website membership group, learn.10stepstodrawing.com. That's number 10. Before we get off, you have to tell us how to find that other- um, The map, up with Madeline. That's all we need to know, Judith. We'll be fine. I yeah. know. <laughs> the online course. Madeline absolutely. is an overachiever like I, like it's, you and I. Well, she's beating us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a competition. Um, <laughs> so we're just drawing something from our environment. You know what? I am going to have to add color to this because I drew my watercolor set and it wouldn't be right to have a watercolor set with no color. What does they used to say? Uh, an empty bookcase is like a face with no eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard that one. 
Well, I hope you have. <laughs> but yeah, that would be disturbing to see. It's disturbing. So a, a watercolor set without color is like a face with no eyes, okay? Mm -hmm. I believe it. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad this painting up here is abstract because that will make it easy. Okay, I'm done. Yay! <laughs> okay, I'm about done too with what I would call phase one of my drawing. So, Judith, you want to show us what you got? I'm going to yes, pop you up I on the do. screen. So, I see what. Uh oh, I spent three hours on the phone. <gasps> wow. To get my new printer to work, and finally they got it to work right before we started. Yay. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. You just did that right now? Practice. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> so, one thing you might do is just draw like the table that it's sitting on, like just a line in the back to kind of suggest, like, here it is sitting on this place. Like, give it just a touch of context, but. Okay. You wouldn't, you don't have to because you wrote the note. I'm still trying to figure out that, that fine line of what makes it an urban sketch. Like I know they want you to have some kind of context, but I don't know if it's just having a note counts or if you have to. Um, okay, I added that. Yay, excellent. That's fantastic. Way to go. See, yeah. I see what was here, I didn't see. Let me see. Oh, you didn't see it? Mm-hmm. Oh, what's it say? You wrote all of that in like two seconds? My God. After three hours of being on the phone with HP, my <laughs> new printer is working. Yay. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> that is definitely an urban sketch from your urban house. Yes. Diane, you want to show us what you got? Oh, yeah. I'll show you mine. And I uh, now I'm, I'm really all wigged out about the frame. Oh, ooh. It was what I call a desk scape. I guess I'm a desk scape. Oh my gosh, I love that. That's <laughs> that should be a new thing. <laughs> That's it's great. My, it's my back scratcher, my Altoids, my rolling papers, my ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But uh, the thing is now the frame, I disrespected the frame so much. That's what frames are for. You just tell those frames who's boss. But it's an imposition on the rest of the drawing at that at some point. I don't know. I'm working on it. Yeah. I like it. But I well, like the idea of working with the frame. It's going to be something. Yeah. I, I like to draw the frame to break out of the frame. And I think if, as I continue with my sketchbook, I'll have some frames where I stay inside of it. So. Oh, look at that. That's so cute. <laughs> frame within a frame. <laughs> it is a frame within a frame. Um, so I, you know, y'all saw me, I drew the rectangle first in some areas I'm respecting the frame. So you only see a little smidge of this painting yeah. here, but it would be too weird to have the lamp without the light right. shade. And yeah. I will go back and I am going to add color to this just because it's a watercolor set. And I think it'll look more interesting if I have the watercolors like all laid out and the bright brightness there. But I think I'll leave everything else black and white. I think I'll just do the watercolor set colorful and the painting because it's like a brightly colored abstract maybe, painting. Maybe only the painting in the frame so the watercolor set that's hanging outside doesn't have color. No, I want my watercolor set to have color. <laughs> but I mean, using yeah. the frame just to put it in, perhaps. Um, yeah, I mean, I could definitely draw even a relatively boring scene like this in many different ways. And that's kind of the beauty of urban sketching is it like you look around your day to day world and things that used to be kind of like, mm, well, whatever, I look at that all the time. Now you're like, ooh, well, which part am I going to put in color and which part not? <laughs> which so, part in the frame and which part not? Now, this yes. is deal. This mm -hmm. is like a big challenge. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is uh, uh, working it. <laughs> absolutely. Zumba. So that concludes our lesson. If you want to finish up whatever you got started, if you didn't feel like you finished it, I'm going to work a little bit more on this one. 